Hi guys, this is Terrence here with uh, win a guide to setting up Windows 8. I actually find this to be a fantastic operating system. It's far faster than Windows 7. It boots up very quick and moves between programs very quickly as well. So the first thing you'll want to do is get yourself on. Well, actually, you want to sign in and make sure that it's key that you when you do create your account, your user account, you use in it a the email that you use with most of your stuff so say you have an xbox and xbox live you want to use that email that way you can use this xbox smart glass app and a couple other apps that uh that keep you synced up with with your account on other devices first okay here we go we're getting getting uh orient yourself and this is your start menu here and you'll notice that I, it's actually quite easy to use with a mouse as far as I'm concerned. I've heard a lot of complaints, but I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. First thing you can do is take your mouse and scroll over to the right. And you don't have to do anything. You just keep moving your mouse. Just keep moving your mouse over to the right. And this actually moves the whole screen. So you can go from left to right fairly easy by moving the mouse like that. It's very quick. You can also use the scrolling function of your mouse to scroll through the through the start screen and see all your apps. But, you know, I usually I just use my mouse and move it in one direction or another, it moves very quickly. Great. Okay, the second thing you'll want to notice is when you go to the top or bottom right hand corner, either one, you'll get another menu over here. And the menu, what you'll want to do is go to settings here. And this is where you can change all, you know, here you can hook up to Wi-Fi, which is very easy. And Microsoft did a great job with that. Here's your power on and off, as you can see there. Your keyboard notifications and uh, screen brightness. The thing that I did and what you'll probably want to do is go into the settings and change some PC settings right off the bat. Now you can change your lock screen here from the PC settings, uh, from the start menu PC settings. You can start screen, account picture, all this good stuff. Users, um, you can add extra users, which has always been a great Windows, Windows uh, ability you can have on Windows. Here's some notifications that you have. I don't really have that many uh, apps with notifications, but the ones I do, I use notifications for them. Uh, here's your search, awesome. When you're on the start screen, you just start typing. You can search through everything on your computer and on the internet or whatever. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Here's your, uh, you can use different apps to share things and some general functionality changes that you can, that you can make. Um, here's your privacy settings, devices that you have. And as you can see, I'm going through it quickly because there's a lot of them. You can go ahead and check them out for yourself. Back to the start screen. And then you saw me do that. I went down bottom left. That's another thing. Bottom left will take you to the start start screen if you're not on it. If you are on it, it takes you to the previous screen. As you see, right, there you go. Very easy. I don't know why people complain about this about this operating system, but that's very easy for me. There and there. All right. That's the bottom left. If you go to the bottom left and then move your mouse up you'll get a list of apps that you have run, been running since you've been using Windows. And same with the top. The top one will take you to the previous screen no matter what. If it's, if it's on the start menu or not. So if I go to the desktop here, and I go to PC settings, this top one is going to take me right back to the desktop. And there we go, right back to PC settings. But if I use the bottom one, it's going to take me to the start menu. Okay, and then you just go up and scroll down the side. Very easy because you don't have to be too accurate. And you can just select the name of recent apps that you've used. Okay, the second thing you're going to want to do is set up your accounts. And I started off with my mail account as it's something that I use often. And uh, so here you can see you go to the bottom right, and this will give you your specific settings, your app specific settings. You're going to click on settings, and then you'll want to go to accounts. And this is the easiest account setup I've had on any operating system to add account. Select which type of account you want to use, and all these are good. And I have, as you can see over here on the bottom left, I have basically all of those types of accounts. Then you'll be able to use your mail app, which 
I I like. It's not it's not the best mail app, but it is pretty good. And, and in fact, the the Microsoft Office 2013 preview, which I will show you, is, is great as they're they're updating it to the Outlook approach of the new Outlook website and the new Outlook approach. So you got your mail app set up. The next thing you're going to want to do is set up uh, your people app, which is awesome. If you set up your people app, you'll be able to go in here, go to settings, accounts, and you'll add accounts the same way you did with with the uh, mail app. But what this is going to do is it's going to give you a list of everyone in all of your accounts. This is great. And also, what that will do is allow you to sync up your photos. And your photos will have the people, like Facebook photos, like, like a bunch of them from all my friends, everything. Microsoft did a great job integrating other accounts into this operating system. It works fairly flawlessly. So you saw the photos account, the photos um, app right here, which you can set up after the people app. And again, you just go to options and choose which ones you want to display, and then you're good to go. The next thing is the calendar app, which I use, and I'll have it set up. Uh, I'll have it set up to show one account, and that's probably the best thing. Well, it's what I use. If you have multiple accounts and you can see all of them, my schedule is pretty packed, so I only use one account. But here you go again. You go bottom right, settings. There you go, accounts, and you add accounts there. Now to choose which ones are displaying, you go to, go to the bottom right again. Scroll up the side. That's how you scroll up the side. Bottom right, settings, options, and here you can choose which calendars you want to display. Pretty darn easy, and I. I think it's pretty great actually. Start screen, here we go. And let's see here. Next next thing I did and what I wanted to do was uh, display. I didn't know what was going on, so I wanted to display all these utilities here um, so that I can control some functions of, of my computer, some, some deeper functions of the computer. And the way I did that was I went down here again to the bottom right, scroll up, and uh, went to settings. And click tiles here. And with this, you can show administrative tools uh, as tiles on the start screen. And uh, that's what I chose to do. And I, you know, I added and removed some, which you can do by right clicking. All you do is right click an app. And here you can turn the live tile off if you think it's run out of battery too quick. Quick, you want to save your battery or something. You don't want it to show some pictures. Okay, you can turn the tile off. You can make it smaller. You can uninstall it, or you can unpin it from the start menu, which will. Um, send it back into the background into the all apps page which you can click by you click anywhere on the page and you right click anywhere on the page an app or anything you have this all apps function you click it and this will give you a list of all your apps again it's so awesome to be able to just take my mouse and move it to the left or right of the screen and scroll through all the apps I have all the programs I had everything and then again we can go back to the start menu here and you can just start typing say I want to uh, open up I don't know. Look at AirDroid, which is what I have right here. I just start typing AIR. There you go. Look how, and then you have multiple places you can find this. So if I want to go to a setting, I say I want to change the control. Do the control panel. Here we go. C O N T control. It's already there. This it's great. It, I, it, it is very fabulous the way this thing works. Okay, and you can just select it and uh, and open it. Anyway, back to the start screen here. The next quick thing I want to show you is uh, that you'll want to probably get just for the for the future is uh, the SkyDrive app and the SkyDrive Dex desktop op application. Um, you'll do that by going to the store here and selecting uh, and just typing it. You can just start typing. You want to type in SkyDrive. There you go. SKY and click store. And here you go. Here's anything with the word Sky in it. So you can I probably should have typed in a little more, but you, there you go. You can see you select it. Yeah, I'll actually see if I can find your sky. Drive. Enter. Well, let's see. Maybe it comes on on your uh, in your Microsoft account. I don't know. You'll want to get it, and you'll want to get the desktop application as well. Maybe it's not showing up because I already have them. Regardless, next thing will be the desktop. Here you can click on desktop to go to the desktop and you can run or do any program you want from here. And from here I'm going to show you something that you'll want to get which is the Office 2013 preview. You go to the Microsoft website here and uh, or you can just search Office Customer Preview. 
this is great sign up for the customer preview office apps look great now i mean they are just great looking i'll show you what one looks like right here go back to the start menu bottom left very simple very simple click on so i'll open up one note and you can see what one note looks like i have all my classes here different classes why does something way weird always come up i don't know but i have I have all my classes here with uh and it's organized i have tons of stuff in one app one note and you can sync one note with the sky drive by clicking on file and click on uh whatever one you want to add whatever notebook you have here you can click on settings for it sync uh, properties i'll show you what what properties are <laughs> why does it have to be that particular slide uh should should have thought about that ahead of time here's the uh, options and uh you can save and back up your files anywhere you want it's uh, sky drive is awesome anyways I mean, uh, excuse me, OneNote is awesome. I use it and sync it up with uh, SkyDrive because now the Office applications are on SkyDrive. But here we go. Physiology, this will hopefully not come up with anything weird. Here you go. So you can see the color I made. You can change the location you want to save it to, change the name of it, all sorts of things. And I'll show you here real quick the SkyDrive, the uh, application of, of these online. Here's open up Internet Explorer and you can go to SkyDrive here. And... Uh, as you can see, the documents here, OneNote, I've got a OneNote notebooks. All of these are synced. It looks great online, and it's might be loading a little slow now because of uh, because I'm making a video. But you you can see that it, it is quite functional, and it looks beautiful. There's one one day of uh, medical school, and I guess it needs to load, but it, it is. It is beautiful. I'll close this. Go back to the start screen. Next thing you want to get after you've got the 2013 preview and you set up your SkyDrive account and all that stuff, you'll uh, you'll probably be wondering how you can install your other programs. Well, you can do that easily by going to the desktop and just selecting a program that you want to install, like you did in Windows 7. Notice that this is almost exactly like Windows 7, except it does not have a start button. Instead of a start button, the way I think about it is they have an entire start screen, which is fine. Instead of clicking the start button, you click the start screen and you get everything you would have had in the start button and more on the start screen. I, mean, I don't understand why people are so upset about this anyway. So then click the, you can click the file, file folder here, Windows Explorer, and select a program that you want to install. I'll install Pop Player just so you can see what it's like here. Give it permission to do so, and I guess it's already installed. It's just like a regular. It's so easy. It's just like being on Windows, and this is not really. I needed to do something else. So I can show you how to do it properly, but uh, there you have that. Uh, you got your Netflix app, which looks great in Windows 8. It's fabulous too. I mean, this thing. I have it on my other accounts and on Android and Xbox Live and all. They did a better job on Windows 8, in my opinion, than they did on most other operating systems. As you can see here, it's very functional. You know, scroll through all the videos you want to see here. Looks great. New releases, whatever. Back to the start menu here. I forgot to show you how to do this. Which you'll, I also organized, once you get a lot of apps on here, You'll want to organize them and so that they look good and you can do that by zooming out of the start screen see this little minus sign here you click that and that will zoom this start screen out and here you can take and manipulate large chunks of these apps if you want them and you set them in the chunks i'll go back to the start screen to the start screen you set them in the chunks but see this the space here i can move this one over into a whole separate one by itself this, this line shows up here i can make it into its own separate chunk if i can put it into this chunk or i can move it over into this chunk here it is just however you want to set it up you can move these things around however you want like i mean it's just it's pretty easy to do so let's go back and zoom out and you can right click on one and name it i don't know i just like to name it for uh completeness sake I named these sections whatever I wanted to name them and then you can move them and sort them however you want to do so um, 
let's go back to the uh, start screen here and uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to show you get used to it, it's awesome, it just takes a little bit of getting used to and you can go through like all these things I have here, you can go through and it'll become easier, I'll show you how to set up a uh, your internet so I can go straight to Google here if I want to with the Internet Explorer. Um, all you do is so say I want to go to a website, we'll go to uh, hope.edu. And I want to pin this to the star screen. And all I got to do is click right here. And I can either add it to the favorites or I can pin it to the star. I'll pin this to the star screen. And I'll, I'll leave it called uh, the Hope, you know, whatever, the Hope homepage. Let's go back to the start screen and see when you install new apps, they end up at the end over here. So I'll scroll over here and I found the Hope homepage. And I want it to be over here in my internet section, so I'll put it right here. And voila, I have a new button that when using the touch screen device might be easier than, than uh, clicking Internet Explorer and then searching. Although Internet Explorer, um, the app itself does do pretty good at remembering everything. And I'll show you how to move, move around on that. So here went. I did open up right to that page. You right click on an empty space on the screen, you'll see your tabs up here. You can move through tabs, add tabs simply by doing that. These are your pin sites, and here's some frequent sites that I've gone to. So I'll go to, uh, no, I'll go back to this page. So I got two, two of these open up here. As you can see, close them like so here. And if you want to, you just right click again, left click anywhere. Here's your back button right here. Or you can use the normal back button, which is uh, just by clicking here, right clicking anywhere, or you can go forward over here. Pretty quick, looks good. Is your settings? There are not, there is not many, or are not very many settings for the web app Internet Explorer. The one on the, the desktop is got yeah, quite a bit more functionality to it, which is if I was to use it, I would use it, and that, it is actually pretty good. And Microsoft has done a great job of trying to beat the uh, the bad publicity, as it were, on uh, with Internet Explorer and their privacy. Um, they've got most other companies beat as far as privacy concerns uh, go, and and protecting the user's privacy. Um, as you can see here, I got you know, my last pass toolbar right there, but pretty good. This thing will come quick and it works really well. I'll close out of that. I have these are my desktop applications. You can pin them there. Here's these and I'll close it real quick. And there you have it. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about how to use Windows 8. It was pretty quick I know I went through a lot but uh, it, it will serve serve you well to just play around with it and get used to it I'm, and uh, then I think you will come to love it like most other people have or like I have, not most other people, because most people, most people complain about it, but I enjoy it. Just make sure you think about this as a as a start button. This is your start button, and uh, and there's no other way to think about it. It's just as simple as get into the start button, in the bottom left, click, just like the start button. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good luck to you.